It took a number of years with our new planner to introduce the laneway, which allows you to build 640 square feet at the back of your property and allow different models of occupying a site and they're being accepted and they, they can work. My name is Javier Campos. I am the principal at Campos Studio and we designed the Point Grey laneway. This video is sponsored by Dylan McGaster. Check out our new channel by clicking the link and be sure to subscribe. Vancouver's had this history of trying to figure out to put in what's called soft density, and soft density is a way that you densify a neighborhood without adding towers, without changing the fabric so much. And uh, we had a planner that came to Vancouver that was very much about this soft density. There'd been a program earlier to put these what are called narrow houses. People had a lot and a half and they started to build narrow houses, but after a number of years, people got upset because they thought that their property values were going down and it took a number of years before we could build the momentum again with our new planner. There's some key components to this program that are really important. One of them is in order to avoid speculation, it was rolled out equally across the whole city. So capital wasn't going to flow into one neighborhood because you could do it, it just was across the board. And the second thing is that the tenure was very important. You can't sell them. You can only rent them or use them yourself. And that also was to prevent speculation. Tamiko is a fourth generation Japanese Canadian and so we want to take some inspiration from the Japanese traditions but not fully recreate them, just to have them be part of the essence of the building. We made it as environmentally friendly as possible and as efficient as possible in terms of the way that we insulated it and made it work in the sunlight. It was insulated with the rock wool, so it was like, you know, thick, thick walls, two by six walls, but the policy is moving towards becoming a greener city. By the standards of today, this house just meets the requirements. Whether it was built, it was actually exceeding the requirements. We used the metal siding. There is no gutters on the house, so the water just falls off, and we used, again, the concrete here for the water. When it's heavy rain, it runs off and hits the concrete so it doesn't take the, uh, the earth away. There was a conscious decision to do this and let the water just run off the house and come down rather than putting into storm drains. On the outside, we have cedar shakes. The shakes are split, so they're completely irregular. They're not like shingles that are very even. And then we had them hand stained. You can see how the lights picked up different and they all have a very, very different color than what you get with a straight cedar shingles. And then our custom milled white soffit, that's what carries out. We were able to dig the laneway down just because of the way it works, which made the massing come down. You don't notice it when you go inside your underground. We broke all the cement that was on the site and used it as a dry stack for the garden here. The other element here, which is this round window, we don't ever really do round windows, but when we were working on this, we drew a circle and we couldn't get away from the circle being the only thing that really worked. So that's our first and only round window. The red light is a safety thing. It's just a city requirement. So if there's a fire, uh, this light goes off and then the fire truck comes down the lane and finds out which house is on fire because clearly the flames aren't enough. <laughs> And over here to the entrance, we have this change in elevation. So you can tell this is the entrance and this is the living room. And yet at the same time, it's one continuous space. There's another transition with the ceiling change. And so the number of lines that define where the boundary is for the house, there's a multitude of them. And it just makes the space flow slowly from one side to the other. And that's very much part of the Japanese tradition. When there's a lot of people in here, there's been parties, all of this whole area gets seated on. These stairs get seated on, so everything's been designed to be have a multi-purpose. With this seat, we needed one extra step, so in order not to crowd the space, we made this, which is much more of a traditional Japanese piece. It lightens the whole thing and makes it more simple. We wanted to have a space where you could sit against the corner and relax and have guests, and then at the same time have a very expansive feel. So when you look, we have a courtyard on one side to the dining room with one element that closes off the kitchen so that we have just clean space in here. And then we custom milled all of this, which is being used in the soffit and on the inside. Everything on the inside is white. You can see that on the wall as well as outside, anywhere we've carved out. And that's to be in contrast with the heaviness, the width, the texture of the outside to this idea of this much softer and more controlled interior. We have all of this is actually all storage. This whole unit is actually like one big closet. It also was designed to be a place for guests. We can take this out so the bolster can come out and it's wide enough for people to sleep along here.
Here we move over to the space which is for dining, which is here attached to this courtyard. You can see the house is quite close, it's only 16 feet away, but we planted this garden so that in front of this big window in the summer you don't really see the house, it feels very, very private. And then we've got a lot of south light in here. And then you turn the corner and you come to the kitchen. Like all the other spaces, we have lots of light. We've got light from two sides plus a skylight over here. And it was a very efficient galley kitchen, but it was meant to be that when you do cook, you feel you're in a different space. Now we're, you know, if you feel here, you're no longer in that large space, even though you have lots of windows everywhere to see everything. You know, we don't have a mechanical room, so we have like lots of spaces hidden on the way down the stairs. There's a piece that looks like a wall, but inside the wall, there's all the mechanics for the heating, for the flooring, and then the electrical panel is this sandwich, you know, paneling of the wall. There's all these things that you have to do in order to get this because you don't have the space just to create a mechanical room. So now we'll go upstairs and uh, the more private part of the house. We have this tile area that leads you to the bathroom. It's the only bathroom in the space. We wanted to bring a lot of light in with the skylights and the windows. And then we created one step up and a dark floor to delineate the bedroom. So you really feel like, okay, well, that's something else. Quite modest spaces, but we had to use everything for storage. We have all the closets all built in, even the spaces like this that are big storage spaces. Like downstairs is a very much a multi-purpose unit, it's partly closet. So we use the same ideas down below, which we have one wood element that separates the space, otherwise uninterrupted and open. The angular walls were really this idea about asymmetry and balance that comes from Japanese architecture. Our projects are all very different. They're inspired by the client and what the client brings to the table, their history, their ideas, and, and we try to work through all of this. So there is a lot of that influence in this project because of the heritage that we have here. I think we learned a lot. This was our first laneway. Even though it's small, it's just such a much more difficult problem, much tighter constraints like designing a boat where everything has to have multi-purpose and everything has to be accessible. It actually got even more complex than you would do in a regular house. So these have been growing and I think almost all our new projects will have laneways. We've done maybe half a dozen of them. I think what was really important for this project to be successful was to not constrain things and to actually let them develop. And I think that's always really important to understand that like the project will take an identity and develop and you have to nurture that and let it come to something. Thanks for watching this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. And I wanted to let you know, if you haven't heard, that we started a second channel. So if you're interested in seeing more of what we've made, things along the lines of adventure, travel, philosophy, click the link in the description below or click this link right here with my face on it and check out our new channel, Dylan McGaster. And if you enjoy it, consider subscribing. So big love. Have a great week.